this situation with Abdullah Erjelan is is a situation of aggravated isolation. Uh, I think this situation is unique as far as I'm aware. No other prisoner in Europe certainly is subjected to such an extreme system. And the isolation itself clearly amounts to torture under UN um, definitions. Um, we know that the um, the EU CPT committee visited Imrali in February of this year. Um, we understand from what they say that they raised this question, but sadly they weren't able to give us any information as to the specifics. Um, so really, you know, the situation is not only is it torture for Abdullah Erjelan himself, but also it's torture for the Kurdish people to have this level of lack of information, to know nothing about you know, the, the, the person that they consider to be their leader and their inspiration. Well, the bottom line is the first thing that one can say is that none of us really know because yeah. we cannot know because we have no information. But certainly one can speculate that the fact that he's still incurring disciplinary measures suggests that he is resisting, that there is a struggle ongoing inside the prison. And that's something that gives us inspiration from the outside that you know his spirit is not broken. The mandate of the CPT is to examine the treatment of people in detention in European countries. Uh, there, it's it's a it's a, a mechanism that happens by consent with the, with the countries. Um, if they didn't have the consent of the of the states concerned, they wouldn't be able to visit. Obviously, um, so it's on one level it's a difficult balancing act for them. They have to work with the states in order to gain access to to the the, the detention facilities. So we know that they at least have that level of cooperation with Turkey. Um, but what's unfortunate is that where you have um, someone like Abdullah Öcalan who's being held in such um, conditions in a unique environment that we've already talked about, that the CPT is not able to give us any indication whatsoever that he's even still alive. I mean, they are not able to give any information to um, the general public whatsoever. Um, and there's a general principle in law that justice must be seen to be done, um, which is slightly in conflict with, with the mandate of the CPT, which uh, gives no uh, guarantee that its reports will be published. But I mean, the fact that they are unable to publish uh, suggests that Turkey has something that it's slightly ashamed of, shall we say, uh, that it does not want us to know about. Um, if there was nothing to hide, the reports would be would be transparent and open and available to everybody. So clearly there are a lot of uh, significant problems with the way that people are being treated in detention in Turkey. Um, I think it would be within the mandate of the CPT to go one step further and just give us some indications <clears throat> about in how whether he's still alive, whether he his conditions have deteriorated, um, whether he is um, in good health, or just some basic information um, about about his condition. The downside would be, however, if uh, that that may well form the basis of the agreement with the Turkish state that if you say one thing about about the conditions in which he's been kept, we're going to withdraw our consent for you to visit our our places of detention. So that is that is a problem. <clears throat> but you would think that that the CPT might be able to be a little bit braver and just give us some indication about his current condition and situation. A peaceful political solution to the Kurdish question requires, you know, two sides to the current um, conflict being able to meet and negotiate. Uh, it, it means that there has to be an equal playing field. It means that leaders from both sides should be able to meet 
in a safe and secure environment and say what needs to be said. Uh, that clearly can't happen when Kurdish politicians in their thousands are incarcerated. And we've seen <clears throat> on the 16th of May, uh, HDP politicians being given brutally lengthy sentences. We've seen Kurdish politicians yet again being given brutally lengthy sentences, totally counter to two binding rulings of the European Court of Human Rights. I mean, it's obscene, really. These kind of sentences are obscene and run totally counter to all international standards of, of fairness, of justice. Uh, it's just utterly kind of off the scale and it's not sustainable. Something is going to have to change. It can't, they can't go on like this. So peace in Kurdistan for me means that that Kurdish people should be able to live normal lives uh, without the weight of this persecution on their heads and on the, on their communities on, on a daily basis. Uh, the action that we had, I think it was last October, when mm. there were big campaigns instituted, as you say, in 74 different centres across, across the world. That was hugely impressive. Um, but obviously we we need to build on those on that start because that was a start wasn't it uh, we need to build networks we need to keep talking to journalists to trade unionists to academics we need to build networks we need to uh, disseminate the information about what's happening uh, i think the kurdish people have a lot of sympathy in in different communities and different institutions especially when people understand what the history is and you know what's happening now because people so many people have no idea what's happening now uh the the kind of the silence around what's happening is quite staggering so it it rests on us to try to counter that silence and to spread the word and try to get articles written get meetings held in academic institutions to get our parliaments to sit up and take notice of what's happening to debate it to uh, influence their colleagues um so yes i mean it's up to us to build on on that start and they're so brave and so resilient and doing so many things i i salute them really in what they're already doing and stand with them in solidarity for the the dem party in turkey um as i say we stand with you in in your struggle and we salute you, your braveness and your resilience and your intelligence in the way that you progress your campaigns. Uh, and we commit to doing everything that we can here in in other countries to to help you to be in solidarity with you and try to spread spread your message. And we'll continue doing that. <laughs>